I don't know if I'm being lied to or not, but you guys are telling me that what I consider to be boring content, you consider to be the most interesting and actually want to see it. So, welcome everyone to the storage room of doom. And welcome on to a process that I've been working on here for a while, and we're on the tail end of it. That is clearing off this table. This was formerly my computer desk before I upgraded. It's a rather large table, actually. And this was completely full of Lego sets. As you can see, there's just a few left here, but just to put this in perspective of what was on here before, every one of these manuals represents a set that was just sitting here. These were sets that I built in like 2020, 2021, that just ended up on a shelf before I started my new system, which I've shown in a few videos. I've been putting them in bins over there and labeling them up. We'll see a little bit of that later today. But we are almost at the end. I took a little bit of a break yesterday, which is kind of where I picked up on the story. And this is all that's left. This is supposed to be my shipping table. This is where my eBaying stuff happens. This is the stuff for like my non-Lego account. And then this is the, the Lego stuff. So we're kind of like filling that up. And I want to just have some space because prior to this, I'm literally over here like working in the corner trying to uh, weigh stuff and I couldn't even do it because there were so many things around. But as you can see here, we do have some space. Just got to get the rest of this cleaned up and that's just like, that's one little thing that I can check off the list and it feels like an accomplishment. Some of these though, I know the reason that some of these are still here is because they are they're built sets that I have to break down. A lot of these were already broken down and put into bags. That's how I typically do my thing. Uh, but yeah, this this is gonna need torn down. This one I need to make a video on. This set actually has a backstory. I was at a yard sale where this was bagged up and they were selling it super cheap. And just as I was about ready to grab this set, someone took it out from under me. They had every right to. They were there before I was, but I was bummed that I missed it and Brad sent it over to me, but I never built it. I'm so sorry, Brad. I am though, I'm gonna build something. Maybe we'll do like a live stream request, like which bike do you wanna see? I kinda like these these two up at the top here. They're my, my personal favorites. They happen to be on the front of the box too. Following the Lego creator trend of the best build gets primo display. So that one needs its own video. This one does too over here. This is a, a Brixar gift from Jabbo himself. This is an Airfix quick build, surfing Volkswagen camper van. This is gonna be an how bad is it video. We actually did another one of these on, I think it was a Volkswagen Beetle, but hey, it's been a while. So why don't we build this one up? Plus I think Clarkman would enjoy customizing this because that's what he does in Lego and Airfix apparently these days. This one is a great set. This is kind of along the similar uh, situation as Ideas book where this is built, so we need to break this down. These little things, I was trying to figure out what to do. Like, do I just take the minifig out of there, put them in my collection? I'm kind of like debating it, which is why that got put behind. This is a set that I'm thinking about just parting out into the collection. It's the Minecraft crafting box, and I'm not entirely sure. This one is bagged up, but I'm not entirely sure if it's all there anymore because Clarkman and Minecraft the, the sets just kind of melt. So that one is very debatable, and I think we could probably live without that being in our collection. That can just probably get parted. And then this one is one that we built on May the 4th last year, I believe. And it's formerly on display, but I think I'm gonna retire it now because I gotta make places for new stuff to go. So this is another one that needs broken down too. And then we gotta put these all in binders, which that, I'm okay with that being a, a future project because man, that that is time consuming. Let me show you what that looks like behind Ms. Pac-Man here. <laughs> There are binders, so you can see Brickhead, City, Creator, Creator 2, Judgment Day. We also have, you know, it's, it's all of them. And inside there are all of the manuals that go along with these sets that are over here. You've seen me do this before. Like, I got Jurassic World. Got a few Jurassic World sets in there. DC Superheroes, Brickheads. So everything that you see here for Brickheads is in here. So it's like a library where you come into the manual here. And I'll just show you. Why not? If we can find some space here. We'll just do it right beside the... Ferris wheel. I think that's going to go into our amusement park, by the way. Needs a few parts to be complete. These are all in order of the set number. So as you can see, we can just kind of go through here and see what we got. And say you want to build Obi-Wan Kenobi, you see the set number there. You go up into the Brickheads bin and you just pull that one out and you can build it using the manual and those pieces. Prior to this system, I was a box hoarder and still am. In fact, all of these boxes you see here all these moving boxes, they are full of Lego sets that I built between 2013 and 2019. And they moved with us here and they've been sitting here for four years. So ideally, 
those will go over here. Anyways, that's kind of where we're at right now and what I've been working on and trying to improve. Again, I didn't think it was super interesting, but based on the feedback from my video yesterday, this is what you want to see, the behind the scenes of the Brickitech Studio selling sets too. All this stuff's for sale right now in the eBay store. This stuff needs to get listed. Just got to check prices and make sure it's competitive and whether it's worth marinating for a bit or if it's worth selling now, we'll see. All this stuff too, kind of similar situation. I'm going to put these games on there. We got some CMFs in here, even though it says sealed poly bags. They're CMFs that need sold. And uh, this, this stuff's listed as well. Got some Star Wars stuff on there. And yeah, that's pretty much everything that's going on here in the studio. Probably enough to cover for a day or so. So let's get into it. We'll start with my least favorite thing, breaking down these sets. So say goodbye to the Adventure Time gang in the Once Upon a Brick story pop-up book. These will be my first two victims of the day today. You're wondering if I'm selling these sets. No, these ones are going into the collection. I really do enjoy these and I just need to find a place where they don't take up table space or all this box space. But let's look inside here. It's been years since I've seen this. And the only reason I didn't break this one down is because it fit back into the box so well. So inside here, oh gosh, there's more to it than I thought. We got, we got the book, which is just an empty shell now. And then this is all of the interior pieces because you can build two different stories from what I recall with this. And then they pop up out of the book. Lego Ideas is so good, man. Just for fun, I timed myself on how long it took to tear these two sets apart. And it was 25 minutes. 25 minutes for two Lego sets. And you saw that table full of all the sets that I did. So you can imagine how long all of this took. I did leave Little Red Riding Hood built for you so you can see what she looks like. We also have Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk, these little micro figures, which is pretty cool. But here's what the book looks like all torn apart. And I was loving this. That's actually a printed piece, something that you just appreciate so much when Lego does it. Over here, this is the Adventure Time gang all broken down, torn apart. No minifigs with this because these are all figures in their own right. But I wanted to give you an update, let you know how long it is. And now I'll show you the next part, which involves these hefty bags not sponsored but i wish i was because i bought a lot of these bags over the years i've shown this several times before on the channel and on live streams but my inventory system is one where i take these bags and i write the set number so this one is 21315 these are actually very close in set numbers 21315 and 21308 is what adventure time is it's like called the pop-up book but i want to call it the exact thing that it is I'm kind of particular like that. It's just ideas pop up book. Okay. So 21315 pop up book. And I'll know this is ideas because it'll be in the ideas bin in there. And the only thing that I would change with my system is I would maybe start writing the dates on there. Because as I mentioned earlier, when I do the switch over to each bin being uh, like ideas 2019, for example, It'd be nice to, to know what that is without having to look it up, which I'll have to do. But now that my system's in place, I have to kind of stick with this, even though it's not the best. So now what I do, and I guess you could add this on to the 25 minutes because this, this wasn't actually the end of it. That's just the breaking it down part. I have to put these all in a bag and I'm hoping this one fits in one bag. Sometimes if you get a, a really big set, it doesn't, but I think this one will. So I just do this. Is this what you guys wanted? It's a brick tech video. It had to happen eventually, right? I like to keep all my errors in my videos because it makes it feel like, ooh, there's a piece I want to break out. You know, it makes it feel more real. You know, you could you could cut all the things out where you drop pieces or screw things up, but you know what? We're all human. This is reality, and I like to portray what I hope to be an authentic reflection of what my Lego journey is like. And sometimes that means dropping pieces on the floor, making bad decisions, like not putting the date on this. You know, you just got to roll with it. Share your experience. Hopefully people can learn from my mistakes or maybe, you know, use this as a guide for how you want to collect your sets because, you know, as much as I love to keep all these boxes, they take up an incredible amount of space. Like when you start comparing this to the size of that, that's just so much volume that my storage room cannot, cannot take. So sacrifices had to be made. The boxes, I realize as much as I do love them from a collector's standpoint, they aren't essential in my Lego collection even though I, I do love them. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, and I haven't thrown them away. In fact, if you looked earlier, you probably saw my giant box of boxes that's pretty much overtaking the entire corner of the studio. I do see a future, actually probably even a present, where 
collecting Lego sets isn't necessarily my goal per se. I just want to collect things that I really want to have on display, which isn't going to be a ton of stuff, but I do like to go back in time and maybe try to get sets that I missed out on, or maybe try to build them from my own parts. That'd be a whole fun series too. I just, I see so many opportunities in this hobby and I'm just so excited to do it and share it with you. So that's what we're going to do. Even the most boring of things that you asked for. Remember that, you asked for this. Here's the finale of the first leg of my tasks for today. Pop-up book, all bagged up as is adventure time. Probably could have put this into a quart size bag instead of a gallon bag. It would have filled that nicely, but it's no big deal to have that in there. I do need to seal that up though. Now, what I do with these sheet protectors, this is a 50 pack and I got these at Walmart. These are just like standard pen gear. Standard issue, not heavy duty, not the cheap ones. They've worked well for me. They've never really broken out or blown out here where the holes are that go into the binders that I showed you earlier. I just put these in those and that's pretty much it. One thing that's really awesome about you guys being interested in seeing this type of content is the fact that as I work on this, I'm accomplishing goals that I really had for myself. It's like a two for one, but it's actually more like a three for one because I'm accomplishing a goal, you get to watch it, and then it encourages me to do even more of it, which helps me accomplish goals, and we just keep the cycle going. But that's what that looks like inside one of those, as you probably predicted it would look like. Now, some of these are a little thick that go through here, but I just put them in there. If there's ones that are super thick, I kind of just have them stacked up in the storage room, which is not ideal. I'll probably have to figure out a system for that because these can only accommodate so much, and that's probably about the limit of it right there with this ideas book. And that's a 859 piece set, so once you start getting beyond that, it gets a little toy. But there you go, that's the system, that's the process, that's how I do it. And you can use this if you want to. It may work for you, may not. I just break these boxes down. This one's gonna be particularly painful to do that though because it's like a, one of those really classy ideas boxes that they used to do. This one's more of a traditional, just regular box. I break the, the seal on this side, negating the fact that you should open up your sets from the left side, because at that point it doesn't matter. Brace yourself, because we're back in the storage room, but here's my boxes, and this is my box of boxes. It may not look too crazy, but it's literally like, it's all the way down there, and this is what I've been doing. This is like typical hoarder behavior right here. I've just been kind of like putting them in there like that. And then I ran out of space there, so some of the ones I took off the table, I started putting in here too. It's a disaster. Our idea's bin looks like it's pretty much full, so we're just gonna make a new one over here. As you can see, I've got a few spots left, which is good, but also not good because we are definitely gonna run out of space. I have to put a label on that. I'll do that on my own time here. But uh, you can imagine how many sets are inside these boxes, and uh, it's unlikely that they're gonna fit in there. But they could, if we do another row of these, maybe like we'll have a corridor here instead of these boxes being here, maybe another wall of these. I could easily fit everything in there and it wouldn't take up an incredible amount of space. I think that's probably the move. This is the final component of inventorying and organizing my Lego. This is brick set. And if you've never used this before, it's a great tool for inventorying your set. So you put the set number in 21308 is the first one. Adventure time from 2017. So we come down here and then I just click, I own one of this set and that's logged. The other one was 21315, which is the pop-up book from 2018 and I just click, I own one of this set. So far, I've inventoried pretty much everything that I've built in the last three years, and I have 409 sets documented in here. So there's 409 sets in those bins, or on display here in the storage room that I've gone through in my life. And that excludes all the stuff that are in the moving boxes that came over from our old house. This is just stuff that I've built since we've lived here. And you could click any of these pages, and like I have memories of all this stuff. It's so cool. There's all the Christmas stuff, oh my gosh. Now that we have all that behind us, let's move on to this Minecraft set and figure out if it's going to get parted out or inventoried out. If you're curious how to do that, you go to the back of one of your manuals and you'll see that they have an entire inventory list of pieces here. And let me just look. I'm gonna guess, I'm just looking at these blue plates here. We don't have those in here, so that's gonna make my decision real easy. I'm just gonna park this out into our collection, and if Clark ever wants to create a crafting box or to craft himself 
he can definitely do that because these are all pretty basic parts. I think the only minifigs with this are the skeleton and Steve, which we have billions of, and then they've got the cow too, which will be easy to find. So I think uh, what happened with this is some of it went into Minecraft world. I always get requests on that. It hasn't changed much, but some of this is in there, and I don't want to just put a partially built or complete set into my collection, so this will just get parted out. This box just brought back a memory that I had. You see this spot right here? I remember being so crushed, no pun intended, when I picked this up in store. I did an in-store pickup, and I took it to the guy, and I was like, is there any chance that I could swap this out for another one? And he's like, it's not like it matters. The kid's just going to open it up anyway and build it. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And then I left because I was like, <laughs> I didn't want to say, hey, I'm a collector and nine years from now, I'm still going to be doing stuff with this box. Now, there was also my name and address was on the bottom and I tried peeling that off and it went horribly wrong. So this box is just absolutely pooched. I don't know if this set has any value these days. I can't imagine it does because it's nothing like too crazy other than if you're a hardcore minecraft lego collector and you're like i need that original crafting box ended up looking this set up while i was breaking it down and it's worth like 25 dollars plus shipping on ebay if you were to get it to be complete and i just decided that that's not worth the amount of time and effort it would take to do that it's much easier just to push into this bin and make it future greg's problem because that guy he's something else oh we got a clark mock here oh i'm kind of breaking it he was building this over the weekend. It's some type of flying contraption and a transformer, I think. So I'm just gonna put that off to the side. But upon that, we'll rain down a whole bunch of Minecraft pieces. Uh, if you do have this set new, imagine everything actually goes in there. New, this set's worth like 90 bucks. So if we've never opened this and never did anything with it, never enjoyed it and just became a Lego hoarder the way that we should be, we'd have $90 on our hands. Instead, I just have a bunch of parts that are raining down into a bin which is kind of satisfying to watch, if I'm being honest. Being that this box is pretty decimated, I'm just gonna recycle it. And it hurts me to do that, but you know, what's the purpose of collecting this? What am I ever gonna do with it other than put it into another box of boxes? Back in the storage room of doom and back to my table to determine what to do next. Okay, this, you might have seen this bootlego Santa Claus here. I was supposed to give this away last Christmas. That didn't happen. So this is gonna go into the bootlego bin, which I actually have one over there. And it'll be given away this year. We'll do something fun, some type of contest, but I need this out of my life because as you can probably tell, it is rather cursed. Remind me like December 1st, we'll hit some type of contest so you guys can win that. Not that anyone wants it, but you might. Learning to never assume what you guys are interested in or not interested in. That's something that uh, I picked up the last few days. This set here, I'm gonna break this down. It's out in the, store, in the studio right now. I'm in the storage room, that's in the studio. I'm gonna break this down while we're watching TV tonight. So that can be something I do on my own time. These two sets right here, these will be for future videos. In fact, I think maybe tomorrow we'll do the how bad is it on the airfix. This one can be just a, a random thing that I do anytime. In fact, let's just put this one onto the backlog. Even though it's technically a used set because it came from eBay, it's still new to me. So we'll put it up here into the backlog so it has a place and I'm okay with that. I'd rather it be in the backlog where it kind of belongs than on the table. It just leaves me with these two sets and I think I'm just gonna part these out. Actually, I'll look them up, see what the value is, but I think we'll just put these in with the minifigs because, yeah, or I don't know, should I sell it? Maybe somebody would enjoy this for Easter. I don't really need this minifig. Easter is coming up. Maybe I'll list this on my store. This would be a nice little gift for a kid that could probably enjoy it a lot more than me just adding a minifig into my collection would be. So I'll do that. This one though, I really do like, and, um, I'm gonna keep this. I don't think this is worth anything astronomical. I bought this during an eBay deal hunting session and it was a pretty good deal then. Of course it was new, now it's used, so probably worth even less. And this is literally all it is. It's just a manual with a spaceman and this guy. So it's kind of more about presentation than anything. From 2014, let's see what it's selling for on eBay out of curiosity. You wanna see a really easy way to do this? Just put the barcode on there and then it just pops up. Oh my gosh, $350, oh, that's a lot of 11. I'm like, wow. Okay, so I see a new one there for $20, but what I do is I go down to sold items. Hopefully you can see this. And it's selling for like 10 bucks plus shipping. That's new for $20 with free shipping. New for $10 plus shipping. Oh, these are all new. Once you open it, it's probably worthless. Let's go to uh, condition. 
Oh, there's only new ones for sale. There are no pre-owned ones. Okay, so it's worthless, basically. <laughs> and even if it was new, I mean, you can get this for like 12 bucks. The collector in me is like, Greg, save the boxes and stuff, but the, the realist in me is like, this thing's never gonna actually be worth anything, particularly once it's been opened. So I'm gonna just recycle this and we'll put this guy into the minifig collection. And this dude will, uh, I, th I think, just get parted out. The future me is watching this video and this thing magically in pre-owned state is worth thousands of dollars. I'm so sorry. That's totally on me. But in the current time, I'm just doing what makes sense. And you guys should be proud of me because that's a second Lego box that's going to get recycled. Whether you realize it or not, that's a big step. There he goes. Get lost forever. And then this will just fly in here along with Steve. He's in the bin. Down to the wire here, just gotta get these manuals put into the sheet protectors. What I'm gonna do, and have been doing now, is putting all of these into a box, and then one day I'll just go crazy and spend a whole bunch of hours putting these into three ring binders. It seems like I should batch that out to make it more efficient, as opposed to putting one in now, one in later. Uh, so we'll get these ones all in, and we'll see how tall the stack gets inside here, because it's... It's kind of crazy how much these add up. Every time I look at one of these manuals, I think back to the time that, well, in this case, we watched Lego Movie 2 in theater, me and Clark Man, and built this setup, and just had such a great experience. And that's what this whole Lego collection is for me. It's just a, a combination of memories on this journey that we're on. But this journey of this table, as you can see, is, is coming to an end. Well, the table's not, but the stuff being on it is. We're gonna put all these in here. I don't know how many I just did. That was probably about, I don't know, maybe 20 sets that need to go in here. So there's the box of manuals now. Started a new thing. I have to move this somewhere though. I have to cheat a little bit because we can't have this here. Pretend you never saw this. I'm just gonna hide this over here right by where it's supposed to go in front of the Ms. Pac-Man. If you can forgive me on that, we're at the point now where it's all my shipping stuff, of course. Uh, my phone, I'll put that in my pocket. We got the sheet protectors that I was just using. We'll put that on top of here. This is gonna get taken care of tonight. And then tomorrow, we'll do the How Bad Is It on the Airfix Volkswagen bus. Let's enjoy this moment together. My table, which was once full of all kinds of stuff to the point where I couldn't even work in the back there, is now empty. That's six feet by three feet of table space that I can use for shipping. I can use this for sorting, organizing, all the things that need to be done. I can do it right here in the storage room, which makes life very easy. And I never thought I would be this excited about an empty table, but when you've lived the life that I've lived where it's just endlessly filled with stuff, anytime you have a blank space, it just it's a moment of appreciation coming for me. So I hope you enjoyed coming along with me on this. Again, this is what you missed. This was me for like a week and a half, just kind of grinding away down here in the storage room. And now it's like I brought you along with me on the finale, which is great. Thank you so much for being a part of my journey here. And I'll see you in the next video.